Hello everybody. So uh, this is another video covering Neutrik True Connectors. Today we're going to look at covering the NAC3FXWTOP. Uh, this is the outlet portion of the cable. So uh, if you're making an extension cord, uh, which is what we're doing right now, we're terminating the, the other half of this extension cord. This is the inlet portion. Uh, this is the female version or the female portion. And this will be the male portion that's actually supplying power. So um, just pop this guy open and we'll see what we've got going on in here. So um, you've got your power portion right here. This is the part that will supply uh, the power. Uh, you've got this, you've got your little strain relief guy on the back here, just so that you can see it. And then we've got our little collar and we also have our rear, our rear boot. So I'm just gonna take this apart here. We've got our collar like this and we've got our rear boot. So the, th the interesting thing about these true connectors are the uh, rear boot portion is two parts. So there's a rubber part and then there's a plastic part. This rubber part is actually pushed into the plastic part and held there by a little spring clip. So the, excuse me, the important thing that you have to remember is when you're pushing this on a cable, don't push too hard from this plastic part or you'll pop this out. Um, so uh, we're just terminating the other end of a uh, 14, 14 gauge three conductor cable. This is an SJOW cable rated for outdoor use. So before we strip this out, I'm gonna just take a look at some of the tools that you're gonna need. Um, cable stripper, which this is actually the incorrect cable stripper for this. This is a network, uh, this is for ethernet cable. So um, in addition to my cable stripper, I have to use a utility knife. If you have the right cable stripper, you won't need to do that step. Um, you need a Torx driver and you need a uh, wire stripper of some kind. I like to use these uh, Klein catapult ones. Um, so the first thing that I'm gonna do is I am going to put this rear boot portion on the cable before I uh, strip it back. So I'm just gonna start it gently here by putting my index finger and my thumb into, the, uh, into that guy like that just to make sure that I don't push that, that, that rubber part through. Some of them are in there okay, some of them are not. I've had them pop out for me before. Um, this is the uh, cable grip portion of it. So this is split in the center, so you can put this on after, but you might as well just get in the habit of, of putting it on. I like to, to, to build mine with everything in there first. Um, okay, so uh, in this instance, you're gonna wanna take about an inch and a half or so of cable. Just wrap this around a few times. Now, uh, because we're using the incorrect stripper, it didn't cut it all the way through. You can see there's just this little slit right here. So all I'm gonna do is just take my utility knife and just with my index finger right on the top of the knife here like this, I'm just gonna very, very gently rock it until this jacketing comes apart. And as you're doing it, you can kind of see it start to split, but you wanna be careful. You don't wanna go too far in because you don't wanna cut through any of the inner conductors. So we're just very gently doing this. And generally speaking, if you can get it, you can get it to be look like that. You can just take your knife and just touch it to that little piece of black jacketing right there and it'll come apart. And then once that part comes, you can just sort of twist it. So I'm just gonna close my knife blade rock this back and forth a few times and then just pull it off. Uh, so when we've got this, I'm just gonna separate conductors out like this. So white is neutral, um, black is hot. This will be uh, labeled as L, N, and then ground on the, uh, on the connector. So I'm just gonna take my catapult stripper here and match it up to my 14 gauge uh, tooth set. And I'm gonna take about a quarter of an inch, three eighths off. So it looks sort of like that. Let's take that, and then we'll take this guy like this. Okay, so the next thing that you wanna do is just take your uh, thumb and your index finger and pinch this copper piece like this and just give it a little twist. If you do this, this will save the um, individual strands of copper from, from flaying out. Okay, so once you have that done, let's take a look at our connector here. So these are labeled as L, which is our hot, 
N, which is our neutral, and this little earth symbol, which is our ground. So our hot wire is black. I'm just gonna get my uh, Torx driver prep. So L is black. I'm gonna I'm gonna put this in. Let's make sure that you can see. I'm gonna put this in here just like that, and I'm gonna hold it with my thumb or like in my thumb and my next finger, and I'm gonna hold the wires with the palm of my hand. So as I'm keeping just a little bit of tension on here, I'm gonna hold that in and I'm gonna screw this just like this. Okay, and that's good to go. Let's do N, which is our neutral wire. I'm gonna spin this around just like this, holding it so that it doesn't wanna come apart. And you wanna make sure that the uh, copper portion of the cable was fully inside of the connector. Okay, and now we're gonna just re give that guy a little twist again. This is just our ground wire. And make sure that our ground wire is in. And again, I'm just holding tension with my hand to keep the uh, cable conductors in. There we go. So um, I wanna just give this a little spin. Uh, if I didn't give it a little spin, it's kinda, kinda cocked like this. It's just sort of lopsided. So I'm just gonna spin it and then this will force the uh, connector to, to sit level. So. Um, at this portion, I'm gonna bring this up, my little white collar lock. Now, if you can see, there's a little, a little cut in this connector right here. So the, the, the collar portion of it will only go in one way, you can't jam it. So what you wanna do is you just wanna take it and twist it until it finds its, its little seat like that, and then this is good. So if you take it and pinch the end of it with your, with your thumb and your uh, fingers like this, you can take the, um, collar portion of it with the thread portion going back. And you wanna just fit this on here and spin it. And then once you find the grooves, it'll go in really easily. Okay, and once that's in there like that, we're starting to uh, to see what the connector's looking like. And now we're gonna take this nut portion on the back and we're gonna take our hands and pinch it like this and bring this all the way forward so that we don't pull that little rubber part out. And then you just want to spin it like this and then twist it until you can't twist it anymore. Now there's a little O-ring in here. Now you'll feel once the thread starts that the O-ring is going to mate and it's going to feel smooth. So that's what you're looking for. So once that's in there like that, it's good to go. And here is the uh, finished cable with both connectors on it. So this is our uh, female portion. This is the male portion. Uh, so if you notice these two things locked together like this, and then they uh, make a little extension cord. Um, I've got a panel here that is using a true, let me just move some of this stuff out of the way here. I've got a panel that's using a true inlet. So this is what the uh, chassis connector looks like. And then you just stick this guy in here like that. And then as soon as you twist it, it actually is when it makes the contact. So there is uh, no contact here. And then as soon as you twist it, that's when the uh, um, conductors make contact. So there you go. That's how you uh, put together the uh, Neutrik NAC3FX WTOP connector. Best of luck.